We're being asked to find the following limit. So whenever you have to evaluate a limit, the first thing you should always try is to see if plugging in the numbers works. So if we plug in x equals 0 and y equals 0, we end up with 0 plus 0 divided by 0 plus 0. So 0 over 0. So it doesn't work, but it's at least worth thinking about. In this problem, we're going to use polar coordinates. And what kind of clues you in to using polar coordinates is this term here. Because in the polar coordinate system, r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So we'll be able to make a substitution. We'll be able to replace r squared, or rather replace x squared plus y squared with r squared. Also x, well that's r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So in theory we should be able to replace all of this. The only thing we still have to deal with is this. We'll notice that as x and y both approach 0, r also approaches 0. Pretty easy to see from these formulas. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make the change of coordinates. So the limit as r approaches 0. And in the numerator we have x to the fourth and y to the fourth. So let's use these formulas here for that. So this will be r cosine theta to the fourth plus, and then y is r sine theta. So this is r sine theta to the fourth. And in the denominator we have x squared plus y squared. But that's simply r squared. So this is equal to the limit. As r approaches 0, we can rewrite the numerator. This is r to the fourth, and then cosine of theta to the fourth power, plus r to the fourth, and then sine of theta to the fourth power. And in the, the denominator, we still have r squared. Let's go ahead and factor r to the fourth out from the numerator. So this is equal to the limit as r approaches 0. Factoring out r to the fourth, we're left with cosine theta to the fourth power plus the sine of theta, and that's to the fourth power as well. And in the denominator, we still have r squared. And now you see that we lose two copies of r. So this is the limit as r approaches 0 of r squared times this piece here, which depends on theta. So sine of theta to the fourth power. OK, so this limit here is equal to 0, right? Because as r approaches 0, you get 0 times this, which is 0. Now, in order for a multivariable limit to exist, it has to exist uh, regardless of the direction that we approach from, right? We're approaching 0, 0. And we should be able to approach 0, 0 from any direction. So it should be clear that this limit here does not depend on theta. So if it wasn't clear to you, what you could do is you could quickly prove that this limit is 0 no matter what. How would you do that? You would go back to um, some old techniques from Calculus 1. You would take the absolute value of this thing. Again, this is completely optional. And you know that this is greater than or equal to 0. And you know something about uh, cosine and sine, right? The biggest that cosine can be is 1, right? The absolute value of cosine is less than or equal to 1. Or even just cosine by itself is less than or equal to 1. Likewise with sine. So the biggest that this can be is 2, because there's cosine plus sine. So this is less than or equal to 2 times the absolute value of r squared. And as r approaches 0, being a little terse here, this guy approaches 0, this approaches 0, so what's trapped in the middle also approaches 0 by the squeeze theorem, right? Just by the squeeze theorem. And so whatever's in the absolute value must also approach 0, which is that. So again, just explaining that this limit does exist and it's independent of theta so we're approaching from every possible direction we can so um, there's no issue this is actually the limit required i hope that made sense